So guys, let's start. Before uh, I start, I want to apologize. It's my first talk in English, so I hope you want to shoot your head in the <laughs> end of the, the talk. So I'm Vitor Oliveira. I'm a software engineer at uh, Exizub. I'm a Barcamp LX organizer, and uh, I'm uh, known in the blo running blogosphere as aquele uh, gosta de correr. So today we are going to talk about uh, the rules of logging. How many of you have uh, ever modified the, the settings of your logging application? Okay, <laughs> it's normal. <laughs> uh, so let's face it, the logging is the most uh, despised um, component of an application. When we start to bootstrap an application, uh, the, the main concern for us developers is to use the last framework, the last trend, the last uh, pattern, and uh, we forget always about the, the fulcral, fulcral stuff that is the logging, for example. And uh, we uh, only remember the logging when uh, our um, boss is uh, telling us every five minutes why this is a malfunction or our users have a malfunction operation in production. So um, for me, there is five rules of logging. The first one is what? Uh, for uh, the most of the frameworks, the, the normal is only log the errors. For me, you have to log everything. You have to log if it's a get, a put, a patch, if it's a success, if it's error, if it's a validation error. You have to log everything. And uh, the basic is uh, to log the log level, the info, if it's debug, if it's a warn. Uh, and uh, normally you serve an API, a REST API, for example. Um, if you, if you uh, in your backend application, you use a REST API, so you have to log the HTTP method. So you have to log if it's a get, if it's a post, if it's a put, if it's a patch. And the most important thing, you have to log the name of the endpoint, okay? Uh, that uh, the user is trying to, um, to do the request. And the one thing that is important that it's what change, what is the resource that it was retrieved, how many. So you have to log every information about the request. As you can see in these two examples, you have the, the information that I've been talking about. And uh, for bonus points, you can log the, the request ID. You can see it here, request ID or a, a thread ID, a random stuff generator. Uh, that uh, will really help you to, um, to trace the, the, an operation in spaghetti that is uh, the, the all operations that you are seeing in your log. When? If your framework doesn't log uh, the, the time when uh, an, uh, an, a line of log appears, you have to change your framework. There is no, uh, another hypothesis. Uh, another thing that uh, is important is the execution time. Nowadays, the performance of an application is the most important thing. So you have to know how much time is uh, taking an operation to, to the performance of that operation. As you can see the, there, normally we use the, a timestamp and uh, we have to, you have to play attention to the, um, to the precision of the milliseconds, it's important. And another thing that is important, for me normally is not important, but for you could be, it's the time zone. So you have to, to take care of uh, the time zone of the time of your logging. So another rule is who. Uh, everything is irrelevant, irrelevant if you don't know who made uh, a specific operation. Normally you have uh, an authentication system like, uh, um, I don't know, AWS Cognito. Uh, and when the request comes to your application, you know 
who made that operation. And even if uh, it's an, uh, an authenticated um, endpoint, you should log that uh, that operation uh, have been done by an, an anonymous user, okay? If your application don't has uh, any authentication system, you should uh, log the IP that uh, has made the, um, the operation. As you can see there, you, we have the IP address and the user ID. So why? This one is obvious, right? Normally, the default of uh, the uh, logging library is to log only the errors, okay? The exceptions. Uh, only if you have uh, turned off the logging, the logging, uh, that is the, that you will not, uh, not have any errors in your log. So, for the clients, you, you only uh, return pretty errors, but in the, um, in the log should appear every uh, nasty stuff that you could, could remember, every exception, but uh, uh, even the, 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 the HTTP exceptions, for example, resource not found or conflicts, and the validation errors, uh, not, that, uh, not all are that important, but uh, some ones are, are important. And uh, the, uh, for example, the resource not found could help with the security concerns, because uh, if you have a tool analyzing your log, it could um, uh, put an alert and uh, if uh, you have, uh, you have uh, uh, you have been taking uh, a lot of uh, resource not found. This is a kind of bonus section, okay? Uh, if it's important to know where uh, an operation was made, uh, you, uh, you could use uh, geolocation, but uh, this could take a, a, a little bit overhead to the logging because you have to use an external API. To, to know uh, through the IP where an, uh, an uh, user made that, uh, that uh, operation. Another thing that uh, could be helpful for the front-end developers is uh, know uh, from what browser came that operation. And that uh, is re a relatively think, uh, uh, thing easy to do. So, I hope that uh, I convinced you uh, that uh, the logging is important. Uh, I hope that you have uh, a lot uh, of this stuff in your log. And uh, if you don't have this, you, sh you have a lot of work to do. And believe me, it's um, an always, uh, an always a never ending task. Uh, in my team, in my team, the teams that I've been working in, uh, it's always, uh, uh, we have always room for improvement of our logs. Uh, there, there is going to be a, an article about this in, on Medium. So that's it. Thank you.